All right, y'all, we back, got it again. A word about words, you know, a word about words. The passion of mankind has brought over many areas of the political life, including its vocabulary. The words most common in politics have been strange with human hurts, hopes, and frustrations. All of them, loaded with popular orbitism and their uses, and their use results in condition and negative emotional responses. Even the word politics itself, which Webster says is a science and art of government, is generally viewed as a context in the context of corruption. Ironically, the dictionary synonyms are discreet, provident, diplomatic, and wise. The same discoloration attached to these words are prevalent in the language of politics. Words like power, self-interest, compromise, and conflict, they become twisted and warped and viewed as evil. No longer is the, prevailing, is the prevailing political literacy more clearly revealed than these hyper, these typical interpretations of the words. That's why we have this series, The Word About Words. Words we've been taught that's been evil but really are not evil as such. And today's word of the day is ego. Now, people, when you think of ego, you think of some, you know, some psychology stuff about the mind and stuff like that and wookie woo 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 Get off that institutionalized thinking. You know, they make ego seem like it's a bad thing to have. They make power, as I said before, they make power, conflict, and self-interest, and compromise bad words to have. But ego is not. Now, this is according to Saul Selinsky, Rule of Radicals. All definitional words, like everything else, are relative. Definition, to a major degree, depends on your partisan position. Your leader is always flexible. He or she has pride and dignity in their cause. They are unflinching, sincere, and an ingenuous tactician fighting the good fight. To the opposition, they are unprincipled and will go whichever which way the wind blow. Their arrogance is unmasked by a fake humility, and he and they is dogmatically stubborn, a hypocrite, unscrupable, unethical, and they are willing to do anything to win. They, male or female, is leading the forces of evil. On one side, they're a demigod, all right? On the other side, they're a demigod. Nowhere is this, you guys, I hope you get to understand that. On one side, there's a demigod. On the side that you were, you know, you a demigod. On the side of the opposition, you a demigod. There is nowhere in relative in the definition of more germane in the area of life than the word ego. Anyone who is working against the half will always face the odds. In many cases, heavy odds. If he or she do not have a complete self-confidence, self-confidence or what's called ego that they can win, then the battle is lost before it has even begun. I have seen so-called trained organizers go out to another city with an assignment of organizing a community approximately of 100,000. Take one look and promptly ride in a recognition and promptly resign. To look at the community people and say to yourself, I will organize them so so many weeks, or I will take on the corporation, the press, and anything else is to be a real organizer. The ego, as we understand it and use it here, cannot be vaguely confused, nor is remotely related to egotism. No would-be organizer inflicted with egotism can hide, can avoid hiding this from the people whom he's working with. No contrived humanity can concede it, can conceal it. No, nothing antagonizing people more and alienating them from a would-be organizer more than the feelings of flash of arrogance, vanity, impatience, and contempt for the personal egotism. The ego of the organizer is stronger and more momentum than the ego of the leader. The leader is driven by our desire of power, while the organizer is driven by the desire to create. The organizer, in a true sense, is reaching the highest level which man can reach to create, to be a creator, to play God. The affectionism of egotism will make it impossible to respect the dignity of the individual to understand the people or to strive to develop the other elements and making up the ideal organizing. Egotism is mainly a defensive reaction of feelings of personal inadequacy. Ego is a positive conviction of beliefs and one ability with no need for egotistical behavior. Let's repeat that again. Egotism is mainly a defensive, a defensive reactions to feelings of one personal inadequacy. 
ego is a positive conviction in one belief which one no need for egotistical behavior so the belief in your ability or self-confidence that's what ego basically is ego on a more every level move, ego moves on every level how can an organizer respect the dignity of an individual if he don't respect his own dignity how can he or she believe that he or she doesn't really believe in himself how can he or she Convince the people that they have in themselves and that they have the power to stand up and win if he or she did not believe in him or herself. The ego must be all pervading that all personality of the organizer is contagious and that it converts people from despair to defiance, creating mass ego. And that's the end of that chapter about the word ego. And it's something that we need, you know, Marcus Garvey talks about this in his book, Philosophy of Opinions, I think on page 10. I'm just freestyling. And he said, ego or self-confidence, what he said, without self-confidence, the battle's already lost. You got to believe in this stuff. You got to have the feelings to motivate the people. It, it's contagious. You know what I'm saying? So if you don't have the belief or the self-confidence that your people can do it, then you already lost the battle already there. And that's a personal type of conflict within the community and within oneself as an individual that one has to conquer. One has to have self-interest and one has to, excuse me, one has to have an ego without being egotistical. So remember that that's the main part of organization. And that's the word of the day. The word of the day is ego. The word of the day is ego. And once again, ego is a positive contribution, positive conviction in the, and belief in one's ability who needs no need for egotistical behavior. Egotism is mainly a defensive reaction to feelings of personal inadequacy. So that's the word of the day. You know, we're going to have more stuff like this. And if you like what you're hearing and what you're seeing in this page, hey, hit the subscribe button because it's going to keep on going. We're going to keep rolling with this. Y'all have a wonderful day. Peace.